Can you run AI on a calculator? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. But maybe we can still bring some intelligence to calculators. I made a graphing calculator recognize handwriting with machine learning. A less than honest quote unquote entrepreneur or two has claimed to show off AI running on a calculator, but in this project, I'll show you a convolutional neural network really running on a calculator to really recognize handwritten digits. You can use a mouse connected to the calculator to draw a digit, and in about 18 seconds, it will tell you what digit it is. Today, when people think of AI, they think of chat GPT and other large language models, or LLMs. But before there was chat GPT, there was simple machine learning. As early as the 1940s and 50s, scientists were exploring the biological and scientific theory behind neural networks. And by the 1980s, multi-layer neural networks trained via backpropagation had been introduced. Work by pioneers like Jan Lacan and Yashua Bengio brought more complex convolutional neural networks or CNNs to the forefront especially for computer vision tasks like segmenting and classifying images. Countless advances have been made after Lacan and Bengio's 1989 introduction of their Lynette 5 network, especially after computer hardware caught up with the needs of machine learning researchers, but it's on their late 1980s advancement that we'll focus today. Graphing calculators aren't the first platform you think of for machine learning. Today, powerful computers are used to accelerate machine learning, and bigger and better GPUs facilitate computationally intensive tasks from training AI to mining crypto. But math is math, and given enough time and memory, almost any computer can perform any operation. Unfortunately, graphing calculators are pretty limited in both memory and speed, so sanity demands that we set our sights on a relatively simple task, image recognition. Hopefully, there's a very well-known task in image recognition, identifying the handwritten digits 0 to 9. This is useful for everything from interpreting zip or postal codes on letters to reading the amount written on a check, an ancient method of transferring money for the non-American viewers. In fact, a dataset of 70,000 handwritten digits was published by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology in 1994 and has been used for 30 years by computer scientists to test and train new machine learning techniques. In this project, I use a graphing calculator to train and test a four-layer convolutional neural network directly on a calculator. Putting AI or machine learning on a calculator is actually more of a systems engineering problem than a math problem. I'm using a TI-84 Plus CE, which has only 256 kilobytes of memory and a relatively slow CPU. We're talking 48 megahertz. The TI-84 Plus CE is a 2015 improvement to the well-loved TI-83 Plus and TI-84 Plus family of calculators that adds a color screen and a bit more memory and processor power compared to the older black and white graphing calculators. But it's not much. The device you're watching this video on has thousands of times the computational power and memory of even this more advanced calculator. To simplify this project, I built on the shoulders of giants. Number one, I used the MNIST handwritten digit dataset to train and test my neural network, so I didn't need to produce my own dataset. I've used it before, and I was comfortable with it. Number two, I used an existing network architecture rather than develop my own. I've used Lacan and Bengio's Lynette 5 several times in the past, but back of the envelope calculations proved it's far too heavy to fit in a TI-84 Plus CE's memory. I selected a simpler four-layer network designed by Ken Bullock. Number three, I started with an existing machine learning framework. Well-known examples like TensorFlow, Keras, PyTorch, and CAFE are orders of magnitude too large for a calculator. So I started with simple neural network layers from a code base by CAN1357. Number four, I selected a relatively easy programming language. I've been writing Z80 and EZ80 assembly language programs for TI graphing calculators for almost 25 years, but thanks to the excellent C programming tool chain the TI graphing calculator hobbyist community has created, I was able to write this much more quickly in C. Therefore, I spent most of my time optimizing code to run quickly and correctly within the limited memory and capabilities of a TI-84 Plus CE. I've detailed my full development process in a post on my blog, z80.me, link in the description, but the steps include 
building a Python program to pack MNIST images with the label of the digit represented into data files called AppVaris for the calculator, building the neural network to compile for both PC and calculator so that I could debug and train the network on a computer as well as a calculator, build a new memory allocator for the calculator designed for this project, a task that every undergraduate computer science student can tell you has fractal layers of unexpected complexity. I needed to do this because I needed a second heap in the calculator's available RAM that the built-in heap allocator can't access. This is a portion of memory where you can arbitrarily grab chunks to store whatever you need. Because the 16-bit graphics buffer takes up to 150 kilobytes on its own, I switched to 8-bit graphics, freeing half of that buffer, 75 kilobytes, for a third heap segment, added support for a USB mouse so that users can draw a digit directly on the calculator to be identified or classified. I proved that training the network worked on the calculator, but because it takes around 79 seconds to feed forward and back propagate each sample, I instead trained the network on a computer and transferred the trained weights to the calculator. This required implementing checkpointing on both the PC side and calculator side which was complicated by a lack of modularity in the neural network framework I had started with. It led me down a slight side project of improving and modularizing that framework code. Finally, I could test the network, first by using samples from its own MNIST training set. I wanted to show that it's really recognizing digits on the calculator, so I connected a USB mouse and added drawing routines so a user can draw a digit. Thanks to Command Block Guy and the rest of the community for the USB libraries and indeed the C toolchain that made this possible and saved me from having to write this program in Easy80 assembly language. And by the way, as a challenge to myself, I wrote and tested the vast majority of this project over a three day Amtrak train trip from San Francisco to New York after GDC 2023, enjoying the changing landscapes of America as I wrangled a neural network onto my calculator. If you haven't tried it and have the time and funds to do so, I can't recommend it enough. Next time, I hope to show you another approach to AI on a calculator. Like those Twitter users I mentioned, not exactly on the calculator, but at least a little closer. If you'd like to see that video when I release it, feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching.